Howdy, everybody. Here we are, all ready to take you down to Pine Ridge for this evening's visit with Lum and Abner, whose everyday experiences are sent for you each evening, except Saturday and Sunday, by your local Ford dealer. You have asked, is the new Ford V8 economical to drive? Tonight, your Ford dealer answers that question. Answers you with the strongest official proof possible to obtain. A certificate of performance given the Ford V8 by the contest board of the American Automobile Association. This certificate says, The undersigned certify in the name of the contest board, American Automobile Association, that at Washington, D.C., and over the Mount Vernon Memorial Highway, a Ford V8 1933 two-door sedan, motor number 18332364, of strictly stock class, manufactured by the Ford Motor Company and driven by contest board personnel, was timed at 182 hours and 50 minutes over the distance of 5,022 and one-tenth miles, an average of 27.468 miles per hour from a standing start on June 20th to the 28th, 1933, establishing an average of 22.532 miles per gallon of gasoline. Total oil use, 1.578 gallons, an average of 3,182 and a half miles per gallon. Total gasoline use, 222.89 gallons, an average of 22.532 miles per gallon. Water added, none. Signed, Chester S. Ricker, official representative, E.V. Rickenbacker, chairman of the board, P.W. Lewis, technical representative, and V.E. Allen, the secretary. In fairness to yourself, see the new Ford before you buy well, when we left our old friends down in Pine Ridge last Thursday, the elephant had pulled the door off the jailhouse and released the old lion on the terrified community. Lum and Abner have been trying their best to capture the lion ever since, but so far have not succeeded. As we look in on Pine Ridge today, we find Abner back of the garage, preparing for another trip into the mountains in search of the nuisance that is causing such a disturbance. Lum has just arrived on the scene. Listen. Abner, what in the name of common sense are you up to now? Well, I'm getting things all ready to go on that lion hunt tonight, Lum. Huh? Well, you're not aiming on taking this elephant, are you? Why, sure. Who ever heard of hunting lions with an elephant? Well, now, that's what that book says. What book? Why, that one right there. Dick Huddleston gave it to me to read. Tells all about lion hunting. I see it. Now, what we better do is get some dogs to hunt that lion with. No, no, according to that book there, Lum, they don't use dogs. Big game hunting in Africa. Yeah. Well, I don't care what they say in here. I know in reason they don't use elephants to hunt lions with. They can't even bark. How would you know when they struck the trail? Well, how do you know if they don't bark on trail? Well, did you ever see an elephant barking? Why, no, I never, but I never seen one on trail, neither. Well, you can't make no hunting dog out of an elephant. I can tell you that right now. Now, wouldn't that elephant there look fine running a rabbit across the field or sitting under a tree barking at a little squirrel? Well, now, I don't think he hunt like dog does, Lum. Now, look there now where I got the page turned down. Show the picture of him hunting lions in Africa right in that book. Where? Why, right there, right in there, kid. Well, they're just riding elephants there. Huh? The elephants ain't hunting the lions. You see, they have beaters that go on ahead and run the lions by, and these fellas here just capture them. Yeah, well, now, I figure don't mean you riding baby here like they're doing in that picture that long. Yeah, well, now, you can ride up there if you want to, but I ain't going to try to ride no elephants back. You see, these hunters in this picture have got a seat up there. See there? Yeah, yeah, well, now, you just wait now. Me and Cedric's got a scheme worked out where there'll be room for all of us up there on his back. Whereabouts is Cedric at? Oh, uh, I sent him over to the house for some stuff while ago. I, I'm trying to get Baby all rigged up so that we can strike out right after supper tonight. Abner, I wish you'd quit calling that elephant Baby. Well, I've got to call him something. That's the only name we got for him. Well, just call him Elephant till after the contest is over. Then we'll have a regular name for him. Yeah, I, I thought some of them names that's already been sent in would be all right, huh? Oh, yeah, there's some good names suggested all right, but we don't want to do no deciding until we close the contest. Then we'll let the committee pick one out. Yeah. Well, uh, have you made the announcement about the contest over the party line yet? No, I'll attend to that again. I'll go back to the office. 
If you know why I'm just looking at baby, I, I mean, an uh, elephant a while ago, um, I believe he's deformed. Deformed? Yes, sir, now I just look at him there. He, he looks like he ain't big enough for himself, don't he? <laughs> he ain't big enough for himself? No. <laughs> what you talking about? Well, his skin don't fit him very good. It's the way on are too big oh, for him. Oh, well, he just ain't grown to it yet. He ain't more than half grown, you know. You know, well, uh, what do they do? Just give him a skin that's big enough for a grown elephant and let him grow to it? I don't know, Abner. This is the first experience I've ever had with elephants. They just ain't built for style. They run more for comfort. Yeah. <laughs> well, ain't much shape to them, I'll say that. Now, just look at them legs. They just not, might die straight up and down. Yeah. Looks like his legs just run down the ground and stopped all of a sudden, like he's bogged up in the mud or something, don't <laughs> Yeah, they funny built critters. I'd hate it. Wait a minute. Yonder comes Dick Huddleston driving up in front. Yeah, yeah, we'll uh, have to get back in the office. Dan went out to deliver a new car a while ago. Yeah, uh, you just go ahead and talk to Dick, Mom. I'll finish up getting ready for this line, huh? Well, we'll try your way one more time, Abner, but if we don't catch this line tonight, we'll get some dogs and trail him down. I know we will catch him tonight, all right. Just wait till you see what old me and Cedric's got rigged up. This book here has learned me all about lion hunting. Well, you need to count on me right now, Elephant. I'll tell you that right now. Well, howdy, Dick. How are you today? Well, howdy, Lum. Wife said you telephoned you want to see me about something. Yeah, I'm glad you come over, Dick. Come on in the office. I'll explain it to you. What's Abner doing back there? Oh, he's rigging up the elephant, getting ready to go hunt that lion again tonight. Haven't located him yet, huh? No, we can find plenty of places where he's been, but we can't seem to find where he's at. Go ahead in. <laughs> well, thanks, Lum. I've been hearing a lot of complaints about that line, too. Yeah, though. and so have we. Granny, we're trying our best to locate him. Well, he's got the whole community scared to death. They're just afraid to go out after dark, afraid he'll jump out of the bushes after him or something. Yeah, well, he wouldn't bother nobody. Couldn't hurt him if he wanted to. He ain't got a tooth in his head. Sit down, sit yeah, down. Yeah, thanks, son. Well, I know, of course, he ain't got no teeth, but it's just the idea of a line being turned loose in the community is what's scaring him. When he starts that roaring, why, well, you can hear him for miles. Believe me, now, the folks around here ain't venturing out after night. Oh, folks have been calling up here making complaints about it, and I told them we was doing all we could to catch him. Yeah. There ain't a thing for him to be scared of. <laughs> As the sea trunk was telling me that him and his whole family slept in the storm cellar last night. <laughs> well, I do know. <laughs> Feared of old toothless lion. <laughs> well, I slept right in my house. Don't catch me staying all night in no storm cellar. Just locked all the doors and windows and went right on off to sleep. It's a little warm, a little close to all the windows down, but that's a heat better than a storm cellar. <laughs> yeah, you're scared just like all the rest of us. No, no, I ain't. <laughs> you might as well admit it. No, sir. <laughs> I thought sure we'd caught him Saturday night over there on old Piney Mountain. Yeah. Yeah, Abner had one of them coal mining lights that they fashion on their caps when they're down in the mines. Oh, yeah, I was on carbide lights. He had one of them fashioned on his hat or trying to shine the lion's eyes like Uncle Henry Lunsford used to hunt deer of a night. <laughs> yeah. Well, we walked up on this critter the other night, and there's two big eyes are staring. Uh, was it the line? No, but we thought it was. <laughs> well, what was it? Well, I, I don't like to say it, Dick. Uh, we couldn't tell, of course. All we could see was the eyes till we got right well, up Well, what him. was it, Lum? <laughs> hey, you won't judge us about it, will you? <laughs> no, of course not. What was it? Well, sir, it was that wild steer, Luther Phillips. <laughs> and when Abner shined that light in his eyes... <laughs> He taken in after us and put us up a tree, and our grannies had to stay there till daylight Sunday morning. Just come on. <laughs> well, that ain't no way to hunt lions anyway. Lions. Yeah, I found I out. Shine them with the light that way. I gave Abner a book on how to hunt big game in Africa. Yeah, you I know. Get some pointers out of that that'll help you catch it. Yeah, I think you just done that to have some fun out of Abner. Well, I know. It's a good book. My grannies, he's got it in his head now. He's a big game hunter. Yeah. Getting that poor elephant all rigged up for a big lion hunt tonight. <laughs> I do know. Uh, say, what what did you want to see me about, Lum? I've got to get on back to work. Oh, uh, why, uh, me and Abner is putting on a sort of a contest to get a name for the elephant, and... Well, where did uh, we... you get the idea to put on a contest? Well, you know, when I telephoned Sister Simpson the other day down there at your store to see if she could think up a good name for oh, the Oh, yeah, elephant? yeah, I remember now, yeah. Well, there must have been a lot of folks listening in on the party line for... We've got a whole batch of letters here, names, different ones they sent in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's what give us the idea to turn it into a regular contest and give a prize for the best names sent in. Mm-hmm. Uh, what kind of a prize ain't gonna give them? Why, me and Abner decide to give the person that sends in the best name for the elephant a new Ford radio for their car. Well, say, that's a nice prize, okay? Yeah. But suppose that somebody wins it, Lum, doesn't have a Ford. Well, these Ford radios will fit any car, you know. Oh, they will. Sure. Well, well that's all right, then. 
Find out where did I come in on? Well, we wanted you and Grandpappy Spears and uh, Doc Cook to be the judges to pick out the best name for the elephant. Oh, no, now, Lum. I'd rather not get No, that. now, there ain't no way out of this, Jack. I ain't asking you. I'm just telling you. You're <laughs> one of the committee. Oh, yeah. Ian Abner or Dan Davis can't do it on account of being connected with the garage here, you know. No, no. Well, if you've done decided it, Lum, well, I guess I'll have to serve. Well, I've done decided it all right. <laughs> I'll call up the folks on the party line and tell them about the contest. Yeah, I'm just afraid you're getting me in for a lot of work, Lum. That's what you're doing. Now, don't tell the folks on the party line that I'm one of the judges. No, I ain't. Wait a minute. Everybody's listening in now. <laughs> Howdy, everybody. This is the Pine Ridge Motor Company broadcasting over the party line networks. Lum Edwards, president and left vice president, doing the talking. i got an extra special announcement to make today. You folks all know the elephant that Abner traded for a few days ago. Well, we're trying to find a good name for him. So we're going to give a new Ford radio to the person who sends in the name the judges select as the best. Just mail them to Lum and Abner and we'll get them. <laughs> now, this contest will run till Thursday of this week, so better get busy and send us in a name. I reckon that's all hey, for Lum, today. what in the world is that out in front there? Looks like Abner coming up out there. Well, wait just a minute, wait a minute. Goodbye, everybody. Well, for the great I am. Well, what's that on that elephant there? I don't know. That's some of Abner's doing. Hey, Lum, come on come now. Out let's here, you come out here, man. Abner, what in the name? What's that business you got up on that elephant's bag? I don't know. This is what they call a hoodah on that boat, Lum. That's what we're going to ride in. Well, it looks like a body off an of old used car. That's what it is. I don't know. This will make a five passenger out of it. Well, Where most of them just got a box up there. We've got a regular shoe dance. If that elephant don't look fine, that body off that used car up on him, Mary well, Where in the world did you get that outfit you got on there? Oh, undoubtedly, you don't aim hey, to this wear is a big get game a... hunter's outfit, huh? Why, well, you've got enough junk there to start a second hand store. What's that a dishpan upside down there that you're wearing for a hat, Abner? <laughs> <laughs> look at them short pants and them boots. Now, if you don't look hey, aside. Let's look at the guns we've got here, huh? Me and you's going right up here in the front seat, and Cedric's going to beat the line out of the brush. I know that we'll show him how big game hunting ought to be there. Right, Granny's Dick, I know it was a mistake to ever give that book on how to hunt big game to Abner. He ain't got a lick of Well, anyway, don't forget if you have a name to suggest for the elephant, send it to Lum and Abner in care of your station. You may be the winner of that Ford radio. <laughs> Know the facts before you buy a car, and you'll buy a Ford V8. For instance, the all-steel, electrically welded body versus the body of wood and steel. Fact number one, steel doesn't need wood for strength or protection. Two, the steel and wood body is not much stronger structurally than its wooden frame. Three, under extreme stress or shock, the steel body remains intact. Dented, perhaps, but not crushed. Four, it is more expensive to make an all-steel body than to make a wooden frame and then nail steel panels on it. Until experience proved it unwise, Ford mixed wood and steel in bodies and wheels. It was the best way then, but the state of the art has advanced. No one argues now that the electrically welded one-piece wheel, such as the Ford wheel, needs to be strengthened by adding wood to it. Know the facts before you buy a car. All the facts. In fairness to yourself, see the new Ford before you buy. In closing, we want to remind you to listen for the special announcement to be given during the old-time sociable Friday night. Lomond Abner will tell you about a very interesting contest in which they will give away a new Ford V8 every Friday night, and everyone is invited to take part. Gene Hamilton speaking for your local Ford dealer, who invites you to follow the experiences of Lomond Abner tomorrow evening at this same time. This is the National Broadcasting Company.